This could be the business coven your soul has been yearning for. What is she about to do? Yeah, that's right. I'm drinking a light and easy because that's the kind of video we're gonna have today. Ice, half white wine, half soda water. Light and easy. Mostly because it's 3.20 p.m. We're in my kitchen today. Uh, and yes, I'm wearing my pajamas. I'm drinking a white wine spritzer. Frank. Frank trying to steal the show again. Oh, Frank. Here, I'll show you guys Frank. He is the softest cat. He is the Frankest cat. He is Frank. Hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> I've been thinking about the things I hate a lot lately. Uh, first I did a video of talking about how nonprofits are the worst. Then I made a video about how you're never going to become rich. And then I made one more last week about why MLMs, which are very bad, are never going to go away. A lot of this negative inspiration centers around our system, which is rooted in neoliberal capitalism. But there was another common thread that kept making its way into all of my research for these videos, something that kept coming up over and over again. And that thing is that social media marketing has become a complete fever dream. When I made my nonprofit video, I spoke about how the Reagan administration forced nonprofits to operate like traditional businesses, which includes a lot of aggressive advertising. Then in my video about never getting rich, we talked about the way that self-help gurus will use cult psychology and other weird tactics to market themselves and basically trick people into following them. And then you take on that vibration and basically it rubs off on you. And then when you're in that kind of state of mind, well, it tends to attract those things to you and it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy effect. And I didn't really talk about this during my MLM video, but anyone who joins a pyramid scheme has to become like a little mini influencer. Some of them are more successful than others, but either way, it leads to a lot of this kind of content. I've decided to do a massive, not just a little, but a massive essential oil giveaway. I have so many bottles of essential oils so if you hate advertising, uh, detest influencers and social media marketers, and you love cringe, go ahead and keep watching this video because I'm really just trying to have some fun this week. I have a bachelor's degree in mass media and communications, which basically means I can either go into freelance journalism or social media marketing. Uh, I don't make the rules. I do have quite a bit of experience with social media and a couple years ago, I figured maybe I'll give this a shot. Um, one of our friends opened an awesome restaurant and I noticed that their social media like wasn't really that active. And so I told them, I said, hey, let me do your social media for a month for free. This is because I know myself and I know I really need to try things before I commit to them. Well, I fucking hated it. And my friends who hired me are amazing. They weren't the problem. It was the actual social media that killed me. I go on Twitter like all day long and I enjoyed checking out what my family posts on Instagram, despite all the ads, but the restaurant, social media marketing, foodie side of things is so dumb. But within this subculture is like this weird air of snobbiness, like millennial snobbiness. And it's kind of a circle jerk. Everyone acts as though they're famous, sort of like a fake it till you make it kind of vibe, but they're all faking it. I couldn't really keep track of which 
38-year-old white male chef with sleeve tattoos owned which set of ethnically inspired spaces in San Francisco. I just didn't want to be a part of this networking hell that they've created. The problem is, everyone has to do that these days if they want their thing to be known about. In the past, you would open up a restaurant and the people in the area would come eat there and the newspaper might do a story about you and you could be added to like the restaurant guide or the white pages. But word of mouth was really what was key and that's still like a really great way for people to market. But now word of mouth isn't just like, hey, I went to this place last week. It's through social media. So your best friend will post that they went to this restaurant last night or you noticed that this celebrity ate there or you heard the chef is opening up a new space. What happened is that word of mouth for small business turned into social media marketing. And social media marketing turned into a way for every business, huge or small, to advertise. And to remain competitive in that, you have to stand out or go viral or post constantly and network with other people who have helped to create the sort of fake industry where you can get famous. But Famous isn't really famous anymore, is it? Last week, something dumb happened. At Biden's inauguration, Bernie Sanders sat with his arms crossed and he was like, you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, th that's the point. Uh, well, I see memes on Twitter all the time, but I was so perplexed when I saw that it like gone mainstream in under 24 hours. Random accounts on Instagram were posting about it. My family was talking about it. And I didn't understand what the big deal was. I still don't. But the point is I searched the term Bernie Sanders on Instagram and every single top result was some company using it for their little ad of the day, their post of the day, right? It was like Bernie edited into a picture that had to do with their thing that they sell and using it to sell like, I don't even know what some of these are selling. This sort of advertising and marketing that feels like desperate and illogical strikes a chord with me. We all know about like the Wendy's Twitter account and brands coming to life and being sassy as a way to seem relatable, but this is on a different level. Every single brand tried to use the Bernie meme and it's so cringy, it's like, I don't really get the joke anyway. I don't get why the picture is a joke. Um, I don't get why it's funny and I don't get why it appeals to so many people. Anyways, I really don't care about like, the Bernie meme or anything. The point is that this phenomenon of like sucking a meme dry, the, the phenomenon of sucking the life out of a meme is annoying and it isn't really anything new. This was just like a land speed record breaking example of it. Okay, so someone on Twitter suggested that I go look at this page called Brand Sane Bay. Um, and basically it's like when brands try to be hip, right? And boom, right up top there, we have the Bernie one. Um, McDonald's crew be like, can't talk right now, I'm doing hot grill shift. And then the top comment is, can't talk right now or they'll fire me instantly. <laughs> um, Sam's Club says, we're not saying we know where the aliens are getting the monoliths, but we're not saying we don't know either. And it's Sam's Club monoliths for sale and the price is 2020. Oh, hey, it's the thing we cared about for five seconds over a week ago. Nice. <laughs> okay, Reebok says, We love to see the commitment to voting, even if it means a long wait in WAP, wet ass polls. And Brand Sane Bay says, Hey, everyone, get in here. America's ninth favorite shoe brand is talking to Obama about lubed up twats. <laughs> Okay, all right, that's enough of that. I think that like sums it up, right? Like I hate, we all hate this. We hate them for trying to be funny because of the motive behind it. It's like, if you follow your favorite author and they post like, my book is available for pre-order. 
you wouldn't be pissed. You are there to support them. You're there because you like buying their books. With a brand, it's invasive. It's subversive. They try to trick you into thinking they don't suck, but they suck. And I want them to stop. And I think that it should be illegal in every country and it should be um, punishable by death. Okay, so I made a video about how we can all become rich if we just try hard enough. But the thing is, this messaging is a form of marketing. So when some random guy online makes a video about how you can think and grow rich, he's selling you a lifestyle. He's faking it till he makes it, right? After all, what are the chances that he's really that rich if he continues to make these like cheap videos and sell courses for $39.99? Lifestyle marketing though is like, what influencers do, right? They don't have like a single product or business to sell. Instead, they like fake or inherit a very lavish lifestyle. And when you're scrolling through their like travel photos or like parenting lifestyle content, you go, oh, I want what they have. And lucky for you, there's like an affiliate link in the description, right? But so many people are doing this now that it's become flooded with content and that sort of cheapens the industry as a whole. People get so desperate to just stand out amongst all the other influencers that they turn to weird tactics and cult psychology. Of course, an influencer doesn't have to be like a cult leader or do anything destructive. They're not trying to get you to like leave your home and worship them. They just want you to buy some shit and give them attention. But they will use the similar kind of language and, and tactics that a cult leader might just to get you in the door. I was really excited because last week when I was kind of trying to put together this video idea, Drew Gooden put out a video about the minimalists and their latest documentary, which is, like he says, it's like a religion. I was kind of shocked to see him cover this topic because I've known about the minimalists for like over 10 years, I think. Growing up, I was really neat and my mom would get kind of frustrated because I'd come out of my room with like a garbage bag full of stuff and be like, we can donate this. And she's like, what the hell is wrong with this kid? Then when I got older, I discovered blogs, specifically minimalism blogs. I know, I was such a cool 17 year old. So there are a couple like OG minimalist bloggers who talk a lot about like anti-materialism, anti-waste. And these two guys that Drew discussed, uh, Joshua Fields Milburn and Ryan Nicodemus, um, are one example. And then there's another guy named Leo Babauta. He's like the Zen habits guy. Um, and then some other people who got famous blogging like way before YouTube minimalism, way before Marie Kondo, all that happened. I always loved minimalism because it was a way for me to manage my anxiety about like clutter and spending money and stuff like that. I'm gonna put some examples here from Drew's video about why these guys are so weird. And I thought I would love this documentary, but these two guys are so fucking weird. Minimalism is the thing that gets us past the things. So we can make room for life's most important things, which actually aren't things at all. I feel like while watching this, I'm being indoctrinated into a cult. Memories are not in our things. Our memories are inside us. Stuff. 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 Minimalism. Touting it as almost an end-all be-all to happiness, and, and that's where it starts to get a little culty. In a way, they're kind of doing what they accuse all of those targeted ads of doing, by pointing out like, here's a problem in your life, and here's what will fill the void. Then I was intrigued after watching this. I wanted to learn more about these guys. Come to find out, they have another documentary from about six years ago, and that one, is exactly the same. They tell the same stories. Why the hell are you so happy? Why the hell are you so happy? Why the hell are you so happy? There was this. I had this gaping void in my life. In my life. Also written four books all about the same thing. Maybe some people might find value in my story. There might be some people out there who would find value in my story. I started a blog. I started a blog. And something amazing happened. Something amazing happened. 52 people visited our website in the first month. 52 people visited our website in the first month. 52! I realize that might sound unremarkable at first. I realize that might sound unremarkable at first. Okay, so I think my biggest issue here is that 
If you're a minimalist, why are you repeating the same content over and over? Wouldn't you just do it one time? Life is frittered away by detail. Simplify. Simplify. Why didn't you just say one simplify? <laughs> In more recent years, I followed Matt Diavella, who makes cool videos that are like funny, realistic, well shot. Taxes, traffic, pollution. Mansions. Mansions, celebrity culture, fake boobs. These are the reasons why we initially moved to California, but things have changed. Well, unfortunately, Matt is the one who directed the minimalist documentary, Less Is Now. Uh, if you could do it right now, go to Netflix, watch it. It's only 50 minutes. It's a minimalist film. We tried to keep this thing as short and as intentional as possible. Gotcha, bitch. So I think Drew is right that this like TED talk tone and the repeating of content and the delivery of their message is weird. And like he said, they've turned it into a religion. It also really bugs me how minimalism is ultimately self-help. And self-help is always like one degree away from get rich quick content. It always ends up boiling down to how it's going to affect your money, your financial freedom, your career. Making good ads isn't enough anymore. Making funny ads isn't enough. Making completely bizarre ads to grab your attention isn't even enough. Even the brands that sell things we absolutely need, like gasoline and soap, will pull out all the stops with their marketing. And thus, the people selling stuff that we really don't need have to do just about anything to market themselves. So, <laughs> I found this account, this Instagram account, earlier this week, thanks to Cece Suarez. Um, she, Chelsea, she makes anti-MLM content, if that's, you know, something you're interested in. M MLM being multi-level marketing. So anyways, I'm going to show you this and obviously never harass these people. That's not why I put these examples in here. Let's just go look at this Instagram account. Hi, Frank. I'm not going to tell you her handle. It doesn't matter. But her... Bio says, womb witch. <laughs> uh, I help women activate their womb wisdom so they can embody their unique divinity in their business. Water, womb, wealth. Let's just look at the last couple, you know, like posts she did. She did this one. She's standing here looking very ethereal. I'm not gonna read all this. Nobody should read all this. Oh my God. Here's a beautiful selfie of her. She's a very, very pretty girl. She's obviously very like naturalistic, right? We get that. She's by the beach in this one. Trust your intuition, they said. Have you ever had a time in your life where your womb spoke to you, yet you ignored it? Okay, so you're getting the vibe of this. We've all seen these kinds of self-proclaimed witches, right? Here's a picture of her sort of like cradling her belly. And she says, the countdown is on for Womb Warriors Masterclass. The masterclass you don't want to miss. Two blood droplet emojis. Get a taste of your womb's wisdom so you can alchemize your divinity in your life and business. The real thing I wanted to show you was this right here, www, which basically I think stands for water, womb, Water womb wealth, right? Water womb wealth. Listen up, womb witches. I have had some magic brewing for some time now. Water womb wealth starts Monday, 8th of February. I have the medicine your womb has been whispering to you. Womb water wealth starts Monday, 8th of February, 2021. Are you ready to step into your fullest potential in your life? and in your business, the work you get to do from your pussy. All right, you have my attention, ma'am. So in this one, I'm gonna blur out her face, but her face is covered with what I can only assume is menstrual blood. Um, her own, maybe like her hand is too. To be so turned on and devoted by the work 
you get to do from your womb wisdom. And then this one says, the good news is you don't have to do this work alone. Water, womb, wealth. A 12-week soul initiation. Expand your soul. Lean into your edge. We play in the anything is possible space. Create your business into a delicious ceremony from souls that never ends. I don't even know what that means. Creating all the wealth, prosperity that your soul desires. This could be the business coven your soul has been yearning for. I, if I ever grow my channel to a certain size, I hope that we just call it the business coven or something. <laughs> That's all I want. I just want you to be my little business witches. <laughs> Water, womb, wealth, 12 week intimate mastermind. You are done playing small. You are ready to start speaking and living your truth. You want to live your life in full alignment with your heart, soul, and pussy. You are ready to attract your soul clients. You want to help heal the root of your womb blockages and open up to your fullest divinity, activating your intuition. Water, womb, well, leave dripping wet for more. I mean, she's got the sex appeal thing going for sure. She's nailing that. Send me a message to join the wait list. So I know, I know you are serious. You are willing to put your energetic deposit. Oh, I didn't see this one before, oh my gosh. So I know that you are serious. You are willing to put your energetic deposit down of 500 US dollars. This is what some of the women said that are in my current container. <gasps> She's a snake. Okay, I'm not reading all that, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna read, these are too long. And it's just, it doesn't matter. It's just, it's like, let me, I'll just pick a random sentence. I've never felt pressured by Summer to hustle. She holds space for you to journey into your inner knowings, into your womb, revealing your truth and soul whispers. Okay, that's enough of that. I can't look at any more of this shit. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to pick on this girl. I'm trying to prove a point here. And I feel like it's just so funny. But my point is, did she mention anywhere what she is selling? The deposit is 500 US dollars. And obviously it's some kind of course, self-development or something, right? G is selling water filtration systems, guys. She's selling Kangen in Nagic. It's a pyramid scheme, an MLM, and she's selling these water machines. I happen to know that most of them cost at least $10,000. So she's talking, this is like some scripted thing from the company that talks about electrolyzed water and how you can use it for anything. You can use it for all your health, your beauty, all this stuff. You can use it for cleaning. It'll cure diabetes. It'll cure everything. It'll cure your heartache. <sighs> but like, does this sound like water filtration? You were born with purpose, with drive. There is a flame burning inside. Keep it lit with the women you surround yourself with. It is safe to step into your power. What the fuck does that have to do with water? So, but you have to understand that we should have known she was selling water because how many times did it say water, womb, wealth? Water is the first thing there. My point is that this is the same pyramid scheme that's like the hashtag breakaway movement. Anna's analysis did an amazing documentary about it. I'll link it. Those women are always like in Bali and doing stand up paddle boarding and eating dragon fruit in their yoga swing. But this lady is cosplaying as a womb witch. She's like horny for the water. Why is she saying things like work within your womb wisdom and be a boss witch or whatever. And the reason is because there are thousands and thousands of these other like hot young women selling the same company as water machines. That's how an MLM works. There's thousands of them doing this. And she has to stand out. She has to like try something different to appeal to a different type of person than all the other people on the team. Sure, she's not gonna like appeal to a soccer mom, but they're already 
being targeted by the other sellers. You know who isn't already being targeted? Witches? Okay, so using cult psychology, she's being culty. She's being weird. She's creating a business coven, just like us on this channel. She's like romanticizing the cult aspect, you know, rather than denying that her company is a cult. She's leaning into it, right? And honestly, it's pretty brilliant. I personally know like five women who would probably follow her based on what, what I just looked at. People are going above and beyond to do this weird stuff and it's only gonna get weirder. I'm really glad I could share this here with you. Like I said, this week was just kind of like doing something lighter. I don't have like a message or like actionable things for you to do. Just try to be aware that people are constantly selling things to you and you're not impervious to advertising um, at all. We None of us are. Anyways, I'm almost to 300 subscribers and that's super exciting. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you liked this and comment below letting me know what you think. Anyways, thanks for watching. Bye!